as of right now, 44.1% of the ballots are known. Chipper, Vlad, Jim Tomey, Edgar Martinez, and Trevor Hoffman are in with over 75% of the necessary votes. Now, we have the pleasure of adding to that 44.1%. Neither of these BBWAA guys on the BNNY couch wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of letters. publicly displayed their breath. ballots until tonight. Harp, you have the floor. Yeah, I guess uh, the, the big thing for me is I'm still anti-steroids, guys. I'm still not putting Bonds and Clemens in. I think we're going to disagree here, myself and Anthony. And uh, I, to me, I just I, I don't buy the rationale that everybody's softening the vote. Everybody's saying, well, everybody was doing it, so, so let's put everybody in. I still, for me, those guys, I'm sure Bonds and Clemens, and I, I heard actually heard Ron Darley make a good point last week on MLB Network that everybody knew at the time it was wrong, whether there was testing or not, and guys who went down that path made that choice and for them he, they gave up their Hall of Fame vote. In his eyes, I agree with that. So that's where I stand on those guys. Uh, as for the newcomers, I mean, Chipper and Tomey are easy for me. Probably the one I, I won't get a lot of support on is I'm a big Omar Vizquel guy. To me, he was as good, just about as good as Ozzie Smith, and his offense, it, it was good enough. And he, he might have had the best hands I ever saw in baseball. And, I, look, I've come a long way in terms of just saying, going beyond the eye test and looking at the numbers and examining numbers and all that. And I know there are a lot of metrics out there that discount a lot of what uh, Vizquel did. But for me, he was a sensational player, the kind of guy I think should be in the Hall of Fame. So that's where I stand on those guys. Anthony? Fair enough, Harp. Uh, I uh, agree with your right to disagree with uh, <laughs> Bonds and Clemens camp because I certainly am in that. Uh, I have started vote. I started voting for them three. This is the third year I voted for them. Now I, I just think you cannot have a National Baseball Hall of Fame and museum without these two significant players involved in it. And I think the best way to make the point about the steroid era is to put them on a plaque, not just have a little sideshow exhibition that says, you know, golly, st steroids were part of the game. P uh, PEDs were were a thing. Um, you know, look at these guys. They're the two most decorated players of the era. Uh, you know, Bonds, all the MVPs. Clemens, all the Cy Young Awards. I just think we need to have a real conversation about this. It's not a Hall of Saints. It's a Hall of Fame for baseball players. There are enough rogues in there already that I think that this works. Uh, and, and in terms of other guys, uh, you, you brought up Omar Vizquel, uh, John, and I, I really wish I could have voted for him. In fact, I would have voted for him if we didn't have this ridiculous 10-vote limit limit on the ballot. Uh, that's a real problem to me because I think this ballot is really clogged right now with a lot of great players on it. And uh, I certainly would have given Omar more consideration. He falls short this year for me. I voted for 10. I have voted for 10 uh, since 2013. Uh, some of the other highlights, Mucina, Schilling, uh, Edgar Martinez, who I'm stunned isn't in there already. Uh, he should be. The game is specialized now, people. Let's go. I know he was a DH, but they would have found a place for this guy to play because he could really hit. Uh, you know, Jim Tomey, Chipper Jones, those two guys were easy calls. Uh, I know I'm missing somebody off the top of my head. Jeff Kent, one of the finest hitting second basemen uh, in, in the game's history, is also on my ballot. Dan, what do you think of these two guys? In their First decision? of all, I, I like what both of you guys did in terms of Jeff Kent. Big Jeff Kent guy myself. I mean, when BGO gets in a couple of years ago, I mean, I'm sorry. You didn't get if, much support. I'm surprised. Think about it, right? I mean, who would you have rather faced if you were, I mean, BGO or Jeff Kent? To me, there was yeah. no argument there at all. As far as the steroid guys are concerned, I've done a complete 180 over the years with it because I was like Harp for a lot of years. You know, these guys cheated. These guys shouldn't be rewarded for that. But I've come to realize, you know what? That was a part of the game. That was a definitive era, and it went on for a while. And baseball turned the other cheek so if more than half of the a tremendous amount more than half of baseball was probably doing something these guys were the best to doing it so why should they be penalized for that and as Anthony said you got guys in the Hall of Fame already who probably did some things that probably are going to be frowned down upon but they're not kicking them out of the Hall of Fame and so are you voting for uh, Manny Ramirez well, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, and just, I, honestly, you're just separating the testing era from the from the. Uh, but that's a multiple I mean, I'm, repeat I'm, offender, though, with me. Yeah, and I'm not I'm, I'm not willing to make that a, an absolute yet or not. I mean, I you know, Manny does deserve consideration, even though he is one of the biggest cheaters in the game. Honestly, I mean, let's you know, and Alex Rodriguez is going to come up. Alex, who's you know, image has been <laughs> you know reformed. I mean, now he's on the cover of Vanity Fair with with his girlfriend, and you know, you might have heard of her, yeah. uh, J Lo. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, what's going to happen when he's a candidate? Uh, you know, I mean, he's one of the greatest players ever. 
I just can't make that distinction because to me, I know there was no testing, but you talk to these players, they all knew what was going on. I mean, they knew it was wrong. Nobody ever said, admitted they were doing it, and it was just as much against the, the, the grain as it was. You just weren't going to get caught. Yeah, but to me, the, it just goes back to the fact that, like, this was part of the fabric of the game. I mean, the guy who oversaw baseball at the time, Commissioner Bud Selig, is in the Hall well, of Fame already. That doesn't mean two wrongs make a right by putting these, for me, for putting these guys in. Good point. I, I don't, I, to me, Selig doesn't And, and that's either. fair. I mean, that's what, I, you know, I want I wondered, uh, Doug, if people understand it, it, how incredibly difficult it is yeah. you know, to, to vote for the Hall of Fame. It's an honor, and it's great to do it, and I enjoy the debate and, and all that sort of stuff. But there are so many guys who, who deserved more consideration. You know, I mean, I know a lot of Met fans are pro probably going to be unhappy because Johan Santana is probably going to fall off the ballot yeah. this year. He deserves to stick around a little bit more for some more consideration. Maybe he falls short, but... I'm you know. surprised not love from you guys and, and maybe not from the voters in general, Doug. To me, Fred McGriff. And I mean, this is a guy who's only, you know, bottoming out at what, about 25% of the ballots. I mean, to me, there is not one player on that ballot who may have been hurt more by playing in the so called steroid era in terms of how their career is viewed than Fred McGriff. And we're going to assume that he did it clean and he was phenomenal in the Coach Tom Amansky videos and everything. <laughs> but this is a guy who just came up short of the 500 home runs. Back and to back. Back to, to back, back to back. To back. Exactly. But think Think about it at the strike shortened season. Maybe he has an opportunity to get to the 500 there. To me, McGriff deserves more recognition. You no, know, I had, I had him on until this year because Vizquel, I just ran out of spots. Well